In this section, we'll be doing data structures. So we'll be learning array list and link list, tree set and hash set, hash map and tree map, and the multidimensional array. So in this video, we'll be doing the array list and link list. We'll be covering why the array list, methods in the array list, and what a link list is. So back into our code, we are now going to make our program more dynamic with the array list. So let's start by creating an array list. So that is the syntax for creating the array list. Now let's add every single line element to the numbers array, which is a number. So the for loop starts at one as a zeroth index item is the operator. Then the first method that we will learn with the array list is called add. And then we put in the item that we want to add. And now let's change our switch case statements to enter in these numbers. So we use the numbers.get method, which gets the item at index zero or one or whichever number you enter. And let's try the program to show you that it works. So that works perfectly. And now let's change our program so that we can enter in as many numbers as we want and can add them all up together. So in our interface, let's change the definition of the add method by entering in an array list. So don't forget to import the class, just like that. And now back in the basic calculator, we have to change the method add as it implements the calculator. And now let's write the method code in order to add up all the numbers together. So just like that, we will loop through all the numbers in the array list and it will add them together. And then we return the sum. And now we have to change a little bit of code in the main.java file. So instead of passing in two elements, we are just going to pass in the numbers array list itself. And now we can click play and we can type in the add operator and then as many numbers as we want. And look at that, it added all the numbers together. Now there's another type of for loop, which I'm about to teach you. It's called the for each loop. So the way it goes is like this. For each double D in the numbers array list, then we write the code for each item in that array list. So just like that. Now this is very useful when you want each item in the array list to be operated on. Now let's change the code for the method sub and the method mult to be able to subtract as many numbers as possible and multiply many numbers as possible. So for the subtract method, initialize a variable to be the first item of the array list, as we don't want to start subtracting from zero, and we'll continuously subtract from the first item of that array list. And in the multiply method, again, we initialize an variable to be the very beginning of the array list, as if we initialized it to zero, it will continuously always be zero and therefore our for loops need to start at index one. And of course, we need to change the method in our main.java class to be able to accept just the numbers array list. And then we can try it out. As you can see, it's a subtract 20, one, five, three, and it subtracts from 20, just like the multiply method works, as it's multiplying all those numbers together. Now there's another method called the remove method, which is part of the array list. And this will remove any item at the index that you specify. Now there is also the linked list. 
So the link list is almost the same as the array list. However, the positive of using the link list is that it is faster for adding and deleting items. However, array lists are better for accessing specific items. So this becomes very good when you have array lists or link lists of thousands of items.